Hey everybody, I've got another map for us to look at today, so let's go into the editor and we'll see what we have for us. So, six player game, and I have loaded it into the test script. So the map we'll be looking at today is Jaguar Den. So this is a map I made quite a long time ago, and I haven't really looked at it much since then. So we're going to be updating this map, and for the most part, the changes to the map layout aren't going to be super special. It's all going to be stuff we basically looked at before, but stick around to the end and we can see what we can do to make this map a bit more interesting with what we know how to do now and add a bit more spice. So the way this map is supposed to be is that players are going to surround this middle area, um, which is at a lower elevation than the players. The middle is filled with a bunch of jaguars, and the unique feature about this map is the jaguars will actually be able to contain food and be hunted by villagers. And if we go into the code of that map, we can go look for our jaguars. And the way that we give the jaguars food is with a resource delta. So resource delta, as we should know by now, is an attribute that we can give to objects to increase the storage value of the resource that they contain. And if we take a look in the game, we can see that jaguars indeed have a resource storage value of food. It's just that the value is zero, so it never comes into play in any standard game. Now, since we launched this game in the editor, the resource delta attribute is not gonna have an effect, but if we launch the standard game, we can increase that food storage resource um, to be 100. So as is good practice when we have kinds of maps that we have here where there's important things in the middle that players are going to be needing in the early game, it's probably a good idea to have a circle radius for our player lands so we can have a bit more equal distance from the center of the map. So the player lands can have a circle radius, uh, let's say 35, and give it just a small amount of variance. And we can see that that's basically what's going on here. So all players are going to be a bit equidistant from the center now. And let's take a look at the rest of the map here. So there's no reason that this base terrain of the map has to be water. I'm not really sure why I did that back then, but we can make the base terrain of the map grass too. But we can make this middle land starting out as water, and we'll see why later on. So the player lands all lower this base elevation by a little bit to be five instead of six. And then elevation is going to be happening on top of grass two instead of water, which was the previous base terrain. We'll set scale by size. I don't believe I've ever mentioned this before, but the way elevation scales in the Definitive Edition is different from the way it used to scale in the original game. See, the way it works now is that when we set scale by size, that will proportionally increase the number of tiles to map size without ever changing the number of clumps, and setting scale by groups will proportionally increase the number of clumps without ever changing the number of tiles. And in the original game, it was opposite of that. So um, nowadays, a better looking elevation statement looks a bit more like this. So we have a set number of tiles that we set scale by size. And to make sure our number of clumps increases proportionally to map size, we can define the number of clumps independently for each map size. So if it's a tiny map, it'll have 12 clumps, small map 17, then 23, 32, 39, 46, etc. And since we can enable balanced elevation in the definitive edition, we can use that as well to help the elevation generate a bit more evenly. So what's nice about having our central land that's in the middle is having the terrain type of water is that if we 
remove this terrain generation section and everything after that we can see that this can actually help us in the way if we want to generate cliffs on our map for example if we put in a cliff generation section like that we can control where the cliffs go since cliffs naturally can't spawn on water we can generate cliffs on our map and make sure that the cliffs will never be spawning in the middle land which we would prefer to avoid and since cliffs are generated before the terrain generation section takes place it's necessary to have this water land showing up in the land generation section um, and then we can cover it up later in terrains so for example we could just cover this middle land the middle water in, with dirt and we can see what that did here is it just covered it up with dirt while still keeping all of the cliffs from spawning in the middle, which is nice. And so the rest of the terrain generation section. So we lowered the base elevation of the player land, so we'll respectively lowered these height limits. For the amount of forest on this map, 15% is um, quite a bit for a land map. I'll decrease that slightly to 14 and decrease the number of clumps from 32 to 20. And additionally, since we added cliffs on our map, I think it would be good to add a spacing to other terrain types attribute so that the forest will not spawn too close to the cliffs. We can see what we have at this point here. So the map is going to be pretty wallable because we have a bunch of forests and cliffs here but that's that's not necessarily a bad thing um, let's keep moving on let's beautify the forest a little bit so we'll create some DLC rainforest on top of the jungle 7% 100 clumps we'll have Rain mask value of two, and then additionally, we'll do 100% of the jungle, more clumps, and the terrain mask value of one, which will mix in the forest and make the base terrain a bit more homogeneous. So we have our forest mixing here, and if we delete the objects, we can see that with the masking that we've done, the base terrain of the forest looks a bit more homogeneous than it would otherwise. So that looks nice. And then, so we're creating some terrains in the middle of the map. So we'll have some palm desert on dirt. We have desert on dirt, and we have this grassy road on dirt. Um, let's also use terrain masks for those. And then additionally, we'll add a little bit more decoration. Just create a small bit of water in this dirt area. We'll just say number of tiles, eight. Number of clumps is eight. So that's looking pretty nice. And then decorating the terrain on the outside, we can say the dirt patches on the outside will be a terrain mask. And then we can create some uh, DLC jungle grass on top of grass too. And then in addition to that, some DLC log. Mm, not bogland, it's moorland. So after the terrain generation section of the map is done, we can see that's looking pretty nice. Now for the object section, most of this is pretty standard, except we'll 
give these some attributes of um, a void forest zone and then a void cliff zone also since we have both forests and cliffs on our map so we have this give that to all the guilds and the stones and we'll add that also to forage bushes the fours and gears actually make this to make it a bit more suitable for the American theme also mean distance replacement six to keep things from spawning too close to the berries and then for the jaguars that contain food I'll move this out of the non-deathmatch case so they can um, spawn pretty much in any case so we'll put these fairly close to the beginning up here and in addition to that we can notice that we only have a secondary gold for the player and not a third gold so we'll put a tertiary gold in here for all the players and we will reduce the extra gold piles on the map from three to two and while we're at it we'll make the extra gold and stone on the map spawn um, in the middle here since we have a land ID up at the top that we have for our central land um, we'll just put a land position 50-50 to make it be nice and clean um, and then we can take this place on specific land ID attribute and we can give it to the extra golds and stones and then we will get rid of the min distance to players attribute because this attribute would keep it um, from spawning too close to the land origin that it's supposed to be placed on so we don't need that and in addition to that we'll say max distance to other zones will be three so it stays a little bit away from the beach border on the outside here So, we can see what we have here. Um, we can see that every player will be having three golds available to them um, and two stone piles. Um, and then all of the extra gold and stone will be spawning in the middle. And since we used terrain masks for all the terrains that we put in the middle, we can see that these gold piles aren't going to be restricted to anything. For example, they normally wouldn't be able to be placed on this road terrain, but since it's a terrain mask, it still considers this terrain to be dirt. So that's nice. So let's try and think about how well this map works in terms of gameplay. So we are here in a standard game now, and we are on a map in which there's a bunch of jaguars in the middle of the map, that we could potentially hunt and gain a lot of food for us. But because of the fog of war, there's really no way to know that it's the case that there's a bunch of jaguars here that contain food. So let's try and think about what we can do to try and help this issue out a bit. So let's take a look. Now, I said there were supposed to be jaguars in this map, but as we can see, there's actually no jaguars on this map in the middle here they actually happen to be over here and here and here on the outside of the map now i didn't actually plan on this happening but since the issue has come up i think it's a good opportunity to explain why it's actually happening so in the code we tried to place the jaguars using place on specific land id and since this beach border is a restricted terrain for jaguars it was supposed to restrict jaguars to only spawn in the middle of the map which is where the this land id is now if we do something create object flag a we will also place this on specific land id and we will say max distance to players is zero
And now when we put that flag right at the middle of that origin, we can see that the origin of this land ID one is actually not dirt, it's actually beach. So since the land ID itself is not dirt and it's not separated by this ring of beach, that kind of destroys the restriction to only have the jaguars in the middle. So that's something to be careful about is that whatever terrain happens to be overlaid on top of the origin of a particular land ID can affect how objects are restricted to it. So um, in our case, luckily that's not such a big deal since um, the middle terrain is all dirt. So instead of placing on specific land ID, we can just say terrain to place on dirt. And then we can do a similar thing with the extra golds and stones, which were supposed to be placed on specific land ID, but we can place them on dirt instead, since the middle land is the only place where we're going to have dirt on a map. Any dirt that's in the rest of the map is masked, so this is still considered to be grass. So now this is looking better. And now back to the issue at hand is how can we make players aware that there are jaguars in the middle of the map that contain food? Now, one idea is to cover the middle with a bunch of map reveals for every player. And that's one way, but we don't necessarily want the middle land to be revealed for the entirety of the game. Um, so we can try something with object number 112. which um, we saw in a previous video was a temporary revealer. So it grants visibility for a couple seconds and then goes away after a little while. Um, so we'll create flares. Um, number of objects will be a lot. Set place for every player. And then terrain to place on will also be dirt. So let's see what this does for us here. So the middle is revealed and then the visibility goes away after about seven seconds. Now, if we happen to look in the middle within those seven seconds to be able to see that the Jaguars actually contain food, that would be nice. Um, but if not, um, as soon as the fog of war returns, um, the Jaguars are obviously invisible and we can't click them to actually check to see if they add food. So that's kind of an issue. So let's try and think about what we can do about that. So regarding this temporary revealer object that we're using, it's a fair question to ask, why does the visibility only last for seven seconds? So if we go into the um, advanced genie editor and we look for object 112, we can see that it has a resource called corpse decay time with an amount seven. And that seven is very suspicious in the sense that that's the exact time it took for the visibility on this map to go away. So if we were to increase this resource to a larger number, perhaps we could gain visibility for a longer amount of time. So in a similar way that we increased the resource storage of the Jaguars. Let's try and increase the resource storage of these flares. So we are in the middle of the map here and we're looking at everything that's happening and we can see that seven seconds has gone by and the visibility still has not gone away. And if we could keep looking at this for another minute or so after 100 seconds has passed, we would be able to see that the visibility would go away after 107 seconds because of that resource delta that we had specified. And then the beauty of using a resource delta is that we can kind of customize these independently. So if I had just some generic flares in the middle of the map to explore that area, and then if I wanted to put some longer lasting flares that are just revealing the Jaguars and not the rest of the middle, we could try and give the Jaguars an accurate area. And 
we can try to place some more flares inside that actor area. Actor. Now this is actually pretty interesting because back when the Jaguars were referenced to a land ID, I was fairly confident that the flares would be able to successfully generate for all players in the game. But now that they're not referenced to a land ID, um, we might actually run into some problems. Um, if you haven't watched the video where I dove into some of the rules of actor areas, I recommend you do that. It's actually kind of relevant in this case. But let's put a second object um, onto these flares. To make sure whether or not they're actually able to generate for all the players in the game. Um, we wanted a resource delta on this, so the longer lasting flares will be 593 seconds, so 593 plus 7 uh, is 600 seconds, so they would last about 10 minutes. Well, as we can see, that didn't exactly work. The flares that we tried to put around the Jaguars didn't actually stay restricted to the Jaguars, and now we've got ourselves a rainbow map. So let's try and fix this problem and see what we can do. So since placing in that particular actor area didn't work, we can try to use an inverse actor area method instead. So we'll go back to the script and we'll say, place a bunch of flares, instead of set place for every player, we'll set Gaia object only. We will, instead of actor area to place in one, we will avoid actor area zero. And then we will give this an actor area, area one, and then the radius can be the same at zero. We will also restrict it to dirt, so it's not spawning an egregious amount of objects. And then when we create the flares for the players, set place for every player, we will, instead of avoiding actor area zero, we will avoid actor area one. And then that should be the only place it could go is on top of the jaguars because that's the only place where actor area one is not. So we'll give this the resource delta of, what would it be, 593. Let's see if that helps our situation. So that didn't quite work the way expected, but um, it has to do with the fact that it doesn't seem to like actor area zero for some reason. So instead of actor area zero, we'll just call it actor area 10, and we'll see if that fixes it. Okay, what do we have here? Okay, now we're talking. So this is what the intention was, was to have the middle of the map have the revealers last for only seven seconds, but around the Jaguar specifically, those um, revealers are going to last for about 10 minutes. So that's going to give players time to click on these Jaguars and check to see that they have 100 food in order to lure them over to their bases. So we went off on kind of an unexpected tangent, but those things can kind of arise when you're trying to do some fancy things with maps. And the good news is we're not done yet. Now, if we notice that this map starts out with a spearman instead of a normal scout, because a normal scout can't aggro wolves or jaguars or any predators in order to um, get them back to the TC here. But it would be cool that if we had another scout unit that wasn't so fragile, something that could probably get here a bit faster, but still walk slowly back to the town center so the jaguars don't lose aggro. Preferably something that doesn't take a lot of damage from Jaguars. Preferably something that regenerates. If you watch the Outback video, you probably know what unit I'm alluding to. 
and that would be the hunting wolf. So the hunting wolf is a nice unit because it has different speeds. Um, it has a high amount of hit points, um, and it's a hero unit, so it regenerates also. Now, a hunting wolf isn't exactly theme appropriate for an American map like this. If we had something like a hunting jaguar, that would be pretty cool, but no hunting jaguar exists in the game. But let's see if we can make one. So that, of course, will be done using RMS effects. So if we go into the, well, first of all, let's create a hunting wolf for us here. And then before I get too far, these in the middle would be better suited as off-grid objects. Um, because they die instantly, whereas flares stay present for a period of time. Um, so we'll do that. Um, so we have made a hunting wolf for us here. And let's try to upgrade the hunting wolf into a jaguar. So effect amount upgrade unit. We'll upgrade the hunting wolf into a jaguar. Value must be zero. Now, if you try this in the game, it's going to crash. A lot of the time, when you try to upgrade a player-controlled object into an object that's only supposed to be controlled by Gaia, you can run into some problems. But if we tried something like a Gaia upgrade unit, and then instead of creating the hunting wolf for a player, we can say set Gaia object only. Let's see what that does for us. So we can see that we have for us a Jaguar that we can actually control. Now this doesn't have the same stats as a hunting wolf. It has the same stats as a normal Jaguar. But since we know how to use RMS effects, we can uh, change that to match the stats of the hunting wolf instead of the Jaguar. So the hunting wolf We'll do our effect amounts. We'll do Gaia set Gaia set attribute. So the hunting wolf, uh, let's say ATTR hit points. So we have hit points. What else is different? We have movement speed. We have line of sight. We have search radius. We have armor. So that'll be melee armor, pierce armor. We will have melee attack. Uh, what else do we need? I think we'll just stick with these for now. Uh, so the hunting wolf has 100 hit points, so we'll have the jaguar set to 100 hit points. The hunting wolf has a movement speed of 1, so we will set the movement speed to 1. Now a hunting wolf also has an infantry classification, so it would be affected by tracking um, when it hits the feudal age along with other infantry upgrades, but since we are converting it from a Gaia object It won't benefit from those kinds of upgrades. So we'll actually set the line of sight and search radius to be two um, Units bigger than this. So we'll set it to five instead of three um, Oh, actually I remember what we needed to do base armor so the Hunting Wolf is pretty unique in the sense that it has uh, zero base armor. 
So normal units in the game have a very high value for base armor, so they don't take bonus damage against unintended attack classes, but the Hunting Wolf has zero base armor, so it takes bonus damage from every attack class. Um, in addition to that, it has two melee and two pierce armor, and those are classes three and four, respectively. So three times 256 plus two. So we have 770 and then plus another 256. 1026 for the melee and pierce armor, respectively. Zero base armor, and then the hunting wolf has eight melee attack, so 256 times eight plus another eight is 2056. So 2056 attack and then finally the hunting wolf is a hero unit so we will use agtr hero status and set that to one so it will um, behave as a hero unit and if we do that let's see what our unit looks like then So our unit is moving a bit faster now, and if you know how to use the Hunting Wolf, you know that if you shift click, it'll run at a faster speed, whereas if you just regular right click, it'll move at a slower speed. And that is a cool unit to have. And while we're at it, we can give it a nice cool name also, because Jaguar is kind of boring. So let's say we'll change its name name ID to some cool name that we had. So if we go to the string files, uh, strings, let's try and give it a cooler name. So we can give it the name Bird Jaguar, we could give the name Shield Jaguar the second, we could give it Great Jaguar Paw. Uh, I think this one's good. Great Jaguar Paw is a good, nice cool name for this. So we'll set the name ID to be the ID of the string that we want to reference from. So we start. And now we have a nice cool unit with a nice cool name. And let's see how much better this guy is at getting the other jaguars from the middle of the map. So he's going to run all the way over here. So we aggro all the jaguars in this area, and then we can walk slowly back to our town center so that the jaguars that we're luring don't lose aggro because our hero jaguar is going to be faster than these guys when it's actually running. And then just like any other huntable animal, we have to make sure we kill it with villagers in order to make sure the food doesn't go to waste right away. And we can see this is actually kind of annoying to have all of these villagers bumping into each other while these jaguars are still chasing our hero jaguar. And I can't really tell the jaguar, our hero jaguar, to stop because if it ends up killing these generic jaguars, then all the food gets spoiled and the unit uh, goes away instantly. So what if there is a way to keep our hero jaguar occupied while still standing still so that the villagers could kill it instead of the jaguar killing it? So let's go back into the map and we will try something. So right after the town center is created, we will create a farm. So a place for every player, we will find 
closest. We will set Gaia object only. We will set Gaia unconvertible. So let's see what this is for. So now that we have brought these Jaguars from the center back, in order to keep our Jaguar occupied, we can attack that farm while the other Jaguars are standing still, allowing the villagers to go ham and kill all these neutral Jaguars. So that's a bit more efficient, but at the same time, it's still kind of weird to see this single solitary farm uh, that's right on the side of the TC. So let's try and see what we can do to make this a little better. So it would be preferable to have the farm spawn on the inside of the TC so that we could harvest the jaguars on the inside of the TC also. So let's see if we can try and do something like that. Now since the farm is a building, there's no way to place it directly on top of the TC, um, just as itself. We could potentially try using a placeholder. So for example, so if we used an on-grid placeholder and we tried to place the farm using second object, we can see what that does. So that successfully placed the farm underneath the town center, but the fact that it was used as a second object now makes it so it's not an unconvertible Gaia object, and now we can't preoccupy our hero jaguar by attacking that as we saw in the previous um, iteration. So instead of doing it this way, let's try, instead of placing the town center first, we'll place the farm first at the direct center of our player lands. We will set Gaia object only and set Gaia on convertible. And then we'll place the town center after that. So we'll place an off-grid object, set place for every player. It'll be in the same spot. And the second object in this case will be the town center. So let's see what this does for us here. So we managed to successfully place our farm underneath the town center. Um, and now if we bring Jaguars from the middle, we can occupy our hero Jaguar on the inside of the town center, making it easier for our villagers to um, harvest them from under the town center also. And um, fun fact, that villagers can actually repair these unconvertible Gaia buildings. Uh, it's just important to make sure that you don't actually just straight up right click these farms, otherwise you'll steal them and then you won't be able to distract your hero jaguar anymore after you've stolen the farm. So now that we have our farm in a really nice position, Let's um, try and go back to the terrain generation section to try and blend the terrain around this so this farm doesn't look super out of place. So before we get to that, I actually noticed that the Jaguar's attack was actually pretty low. And that's because I multiplied the 256 by 8, which is actually cavalry attack, not melee attack. Melee attack is class 4 times 256 plus 8. So this is supposed to be 1032 instead of 2056. So let's go and we're going to blend it with farm terrain is going to be what terrain farm is going to be terrain seven. So let's see what we can do. We'll in the beginning of the land generation section, we'll switch it from grass two to dirt two. So, and then when we are in our terrain generation section, we'll have these first statements be 
happening on dirt 2 instead of grass 2. But then as soon as we have done that, we'll cover up the dirt back up with grass 2. So we'll say create grass 2 on top of dirt 2. We will set avoid player start areas. So let's see what happens in that step. So basically what we have in our step here is basically the player lands are dirt 2 and the rest of the map is grass. And so if we want to blend in some farm terrain, we can do that in this step here. So we want to create farm terrain on top of dirt 2, we'll say spacing to the terrain types 4 and terrain mask 1. And after we've created the farm terrain, we can blend grass 2 on top of dirt 2, with, similarly with a terrain mask of 1. And we'll see what that does. So now that farm doesn't look super out of place. Um, so it functions the exact same way. We can still attack it with our hero jaguar. And then I think the very last thing I want to do is I want to make sure that when our Gaia Jaguar spawns, that it's always going to be in close proximity to the Spearman so we can convert it as soon as, soon as the game starts. So we'll give the Spearman an actor area, call it 3, and then actor area radius is going to be 3, and then our hero Jaguar can be actor area to place in three so that the jaguar will always be converted as soon as the game starts because it will always spawn very close to the spearman so that's about all I wanted to cover in this video. Now, I know that adding these crazy and creative things to the map don't really make it more competitive, but we can always scale back on the crazy and creative stuff later on, and it's always nice uh, now and then to exercise our creative freedom and just make stuff just because we can, just for the fun of it. So hopefully you guys have learned something in this video. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.